Viewer discretion is advised. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads for an Italian restaurant that's headed for disaster. Why did you decide to become a chef owner if you haven't got a clue how to run a business? But you couldn't tell that by watching the staff. Give me a break. Is Campagna a business? Good afternoon, Campagna. Or a high school cooking class? <laughs> A big romper room back there. The owner is the big man on campus. People love my food. I'm seriously in denial. And the employees, you, seem to be here for the party. Kimpani is like high school, it's everybody like really gets along. I feel like I'm in the middle of a rehearsal for friends. And you're so sexy when you make a chicken. It takes forever for the food to get out of the kitchen. We need your specials now. That never went out. On top of that, there's not only fighting in the restaurant, I want to go there's fighting in the parking lot. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? And because the enormous portions are ensuring no one leaves without a party favor, even the dog's got a serving there. There's a bone for him as well. The food costs are out of control. I could go in there and just give you five hundred dollars of waste. But now the party's over. You have to cut these portions down. If Gordon can't get this cast of friends to grow up, take it serious. I will run it like a boss. This restaurant's going to be grounded for life. I felt like I was eating a go tonight. On Kitchen Nightmares. This is not Ready. party time. This is serious time. We're doing it. Okay? All right. Let's go. Fairlawn, New Jersey. Predominantly Italian community about 20 minutes from New York City. For years, Campania was a successful business, but since Joe Cerniglia took ownership 18 months ago, the business has dramatically declined, and it's only a few months away from closing. Good afternoon, Campania. I didn't go to culinary school. What's this chicken for? We don't have recipes. We don't use measuring cups or spoons, because I'm the best. <laughs> We are waiting on the pecans. There's no pecans. Huh? There's no pecans. It's said pine nuts. Oh! We have a lot of fun here. <laughs> sometimes, I guess, a bad thing, because we don't take everything too seriously sometimes. Nut job? I'm not a nut job. The kitchen's always playing practical jokes on each other. Why will you stop blocking him in the walk-in? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mo. <laughs> it's like a big romper room back there. Great. We're all like little kids. We're all very silly. I'm still a kid. I still have a tongue ring. I still have a tattoo. And I don't really plan on changing the way I think anytime soon. I am serious, but I'm going to have fun with it while I'm, you know, in the process. Get to work. Campani definitely has its, its, its share of problems, big problems. Oh. Our oven is broken, completely broken. These are not working ovens. So they've now become storage for us. We have two walk-ins. The handles are broke. First, this latch broke, so this door just kind of swings open. It doesn't lock shut. The men back there, they should be able to fix it. I think I'm a pretty democratic boss. Open your freezer. Get me some pancetta. Joe gets very easily flustered and frustrated, which a lot of times winds up making everybody break down. F, you got the broccoli rob? I don't have broccoli rob. I asked you if you had broccoli rob. You said yes. Come on. It took long enough. It's frustrating here because food needs to come out quicker. That happened no last night. I worry about Joe. I worry about stress level. I worry about Melissa. I worry about the boys. It is not easy. I'm financially in trouble. The debt of the restaurant alone is overwhelming. My personal debt, wife, kids, mortgage, that's a lot of debt. You put everything into one venture. It takes a, a lot of courage, you know. I owe my purveyors about $80,000 right now in cold, hard cash. I'll get something out to you on uh, Monday. You better. Some of the purveyors will show up and ask for a check but I don't know if it's the economy or what. I can't see us going on another year, and, and that's a really scary thought, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to avoid that. I'm looking for a restaurant, an Italian restaurant, on the main strip here, oh. Campania. Thank you. Campania. Hardly a uh, perfect location for a restaurant on a strip mall, but Let's be honest, it's the food accounts, and I've heard they've got problems, huh? 
Oh dear. Hello. Hi. Are we one? Uh, all yesterday, I'm on my own. Yes, follow me, In please. In fact, most times I'm always on my own. <laughs> How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Well, thank you. You're welcome. Excuse uh, me. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ramsey. How are you, man? I'm Joe Siniglia. Good to see you. Welcome to New Jersey. Is this a... Uh, are you always pointing, or is that just... I point mean, a lot. I use my hands, you know. I'm Southern Italian, so there's a lot of that. All right. That's the way I am. It's the way I operate. I don't know what he was looking at. Okay, what would you like today? Uh, may I start, please? I'll try the uh, bordo. Tortellini. Yes. And then um, I'll try the uh, ravioli. Okay. Finish with, uh, with pistachio and cranberry crusted breast of chicken. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Ready to go, Joseph. Lamb white, tortellini soup. I mean, I was smiling, but my heart was racing. Backing that up with a tortellini soup. Well, I got tortellini soup working, I got my half rav working, I got it all. You, my friend. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very, very busy kitchen back there. I'm so hungry. Oh, so oh, hungry. I didn't eat anything all day. I'm so hungry. You're hungry? I'm hungry. I'm hungry, yeah. What is going on in there? God. The brow. Relax. <laughs> waiting for your soup. I hope Gordon's satisfied. If he's not, I'm sure he's gonna let us know. It is bland and tasteless. That one was definitely not worth the wait. How is everything? Are they made here, these? Or are they bought in? They're filled with veal. Oh, no, I know it's... I trust my oh, I know what it okay, was. That sorry. wasn't the question I asked. They're homemade... Yes, they're bought in from a place that makes them homemade. Thank you. Is it popular? Um, somewhat. I love the way you skip over it. Are they popular? Not too many people order it as much, no. So, no. Thank you, mate. You're welcome. Mm. I think Gordon's gonna drive me crazy by the end of it all. It's gonna drive us all crazy. Homemade means made on site. End of story. Cut the crap. Put her up. All right, let's take them out. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, so this is the grilled sausage in there, yes? Yes. yes. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Garlic everywhere. Big, big, big chunks of it everywhere. Hey, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't want to go back to the office with that breath, would you? Gordon found that we had too much garlic in our sauce. I tend to like garlic, so I never really noticed it. OK. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I would like a toothbrush now, please. You want to know it's too much garlic. Bitch. I think it was just fine. Personally, for me, if I was eating that, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Off I go. Off I go. Off I go. Off I go. Here you go. Excellent. Pistachio chicken. What is that on top that there? That is grilled zucchini. OK. Ribbons. Holy mackerel. Looks like a bison's tongue. It's dry, it's sweet, and it's... <sighs> Oh dear. He didn't like the chicken, didn't like the sauce, didn't like the crust, thought it was well done, hated it. One thing that fascinated me throughout the whole lunch, all I could hear was laughing and joking and lots of screaming coming out of the kitchen. Um, I was pissed off waiting. You don't expect to hear all that laughing and giggling when you're sat there waiting on all your food. The tortellini and veal was just bland and watery. Then my uh, grilled sausage. I've never seen so much garlic in a dish in all my life. Gordon called me out of my food. I'm not happy. Italian food is about russicness, phenomenal ingredients, and something that's relaxed and casual, but in a delicious way. And I just found it, you know, somewhat boring, to be honest. You'll see us rock it out. Go on. My food, I think, is, is pure and honest and good. I think it was a mistake that I did this. Up next, why did you decide to become a chef owner if you haven't got a clue how to run a business? Gordon serves up the truth. I've never seen such humongous portions. You wouldn't eat that, would you? Can Joe swallow it? No. All right, you know what? Why don't we make it a public issue with this now? There's customers here, there's customers here. I'd rather have this conversation Thank downstairs. How about that? Would you want to fight? And when the staff monkeys around... Yes, yes, yes. You... Gordon goes bananas. Right. Who's going home? That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Day two, and with this restaurant in financial hell, 
Gordon knows that he needs to increase business, but he also needs to find ways to cut costs. I've been thinking about this overnight, and what's bugging me now is, what's he wasting in his fridges? That's my concern now. This must be a pain in the ass. The minute a muscle opens, they're no longer fresh. They're gone. That's dangerous. That's... It's dead. The muscle's dead. This menu is far too big for his own good. I don't understand what's going through his mind to have this fridge stocked with all these ingredients and no customers to cook for. Look, bag after bag after bag. There's nearly two months' worth of chopped garlic there. This is where his $80,000 debt is. In all this ingredients, this fridge is stocked now like a restaurant that would be fully booked for three, four weeks in advance. And we haven't got those customers. So why the f have we got all this ingredient? Stupid. Absolutely crazy. With a young head chef and an inexperienced owner, Gordon decides it's time for Restaurant Management 101. You're in charge of the purchasing, yeah? Yes. Those fridges are stocked up for a, a busy restaurant. We haven't got money to waste. There's endless ingredients in there that are not being used properly. Everything we buy is costing money. I can point fingers in every direction for the, the walk-ins being crowded, and it's a catch-22, because we run out of something, Joe throws a fit. When was the last time you had a budget? Per week is $4,200. I don't think we're scrutinizing what we're purchasing. I could go in there and just give you $500 of waste. I saw that walk-in in a completely different light. I went, holy... Hopefully, Gordon's economics lesson has sunk in. Now it's time to see how this jovial bunch handles a dinner service, which, given the lack of customers, shouldn't be that difficult. You're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Even so, Gordon has to make sure these kids stay focused. Okay, right, you, you, you understand what's going on. This is not party time, this is serious time. Yeah. Nothing to do with friends, take it serious. I will. Run it like a boss. Let's go. But old habits die hard. <laughs> Kumpani is like high school because it's like really close knit social environment, so everybody like really gets along. Yes. 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 I'm kind of like the biggest flirt here. We just all feel very comfortable around each other. While Campania Restaurant is really more like Campania High, Gordon wants Joe to start treating it more like a business and less like a party. Two seconds, everybody, yes? Here we go. Right, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven members of staff. Staff costs. Right. Who's going home? That was, that was pretty blatant in a... It's a, it's a big move, real big move. Gordon definitely means business. Business! Sorry, guys, thanks for coming, but thanks but no thanks. It's a little scary when Gordon all of a sudden eyeballs you. Who's going home? Trucks. See you, buddy. Play Ow. guitar. Good. Take care, buddy. Get yourself a haircut. <laughs> next. I need three on the floor. Three waiters on the floor. Let's go. Who's next? Katie. Katie, thanks, but no thanks. Any questions? I cut a few people. They were clearly upset. You know, Katie was definitely upset. Katie, no, get out of my I had to, you know, I had to make a tough call tonight, and I really wanted to have people tonight that were, you know, on their game. I'm good enough when he needs me, when his ass is on the line, but not for that I came in tonight and canceled dinner plans on all my friends for this. But... Good luck. Let's go. With the staff now trimmed down, playtime is over. Good evening, madam. How are you? Good to see you. And it's time to focus on the customers. So is one order or two? I'll have the muscles to uh, So two like... orders, OK. Order in, please. Appetizers walking in. Salad, risotto, mussels, mozzarella, entrees are pork, rodetto, cod, and a chicken. I'll just get the chicken also. Okay. Come on. As orders hit the kitchen, the staff is quickly overwhelmed and everything is moving at a snail's pace. How many of these did you sell? Guys, come on, don't you know, lose it. Look, I, I had some polenta wedges, they went back there and, they, and they're lost. They're right here, they're not me. Is there any possible way we can get um, shimpaka? That's what Campania is known for, is waiting three hours for your food. Are you guys okay? Yes, we're getting restless. <laughs> yeah, everyone's hungry. It's been taking a long time for the appetite. I'm starving. 
And not surprisingly, problems in the kitchen have customers totally frustrated. I want to drink wine and wine and wine and wine and wine. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Dad. Yeah, how you doing? Um, I'd like to place an order for a pizza. Who the f is 13? That f never went out? Oh, come on. Six. It was nuts. It was crazy. I need that risotto, Joe. Well, yeah. one more? No, it's on your table, Joe. Joe. Yes. It's on the table, my man. Holy f Come on. You guys sitting here for a while before anybody came to you? It's 30 minutes for a salad. I have people pointing at me, and they're going like this, and I don't understand. I can't tell them, you know, how hard it is to put lettuce in a bowl. With some dressing. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. We're getting backed up now. I'm waiting on a cut. Yeah. Come on, table three. Show me that cut. Well, I'm trying to fix it. It has to be broken. And when the food finally arrives at the tables, it's met with mediocre reviews. The worst thing you can do with fish is overcook it. Yeah. This is great to eat, dog food. Just, just stop, 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 stop. Joe? Yes. Guys, I'm sorry, but I'm not serving that, yeah? And I'm not serving that. So will you please stop what you're doing and do something about it? Guys. Another observation by Gordon of this restaurant's inefficiency is its portion size. Almost every customer leaves with a doggy bag. Unbelievable. Right. And huge portions mean unnecessary inflated food costs. I've made the decision, bite the bowl on the portion sizes. I think that's what the people like. What's, uh, what's wrong with that? Uh, nothing is wrong with it. It's going to take it away. They're taking it away. They're taking it away. Oh, my God. Even the <laughs> doll's got a serving there. There's a bone for him as well. Yeah, huh? Losing business big time. As Campania's customers leave with their massive leftovers, Gordon knows it's not just the food they're taking, but Joe's profits as well. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Did you want all this food now? Do you have friends with you? Yeah. And right now, you're my guest. OK. Yeah. Let me just point two or three things out. This is two appetizers, two entrees, mixed salad, and your bruschetta. I'm trying to show you what you give your customers every day, lunch and dinner. I've never seen such humongous portions. Every customer that left here this evening took food to go. It's what the customers are used to. The customers love this. They like the big portions. For a man that's financially in the and throw money literally down the drain for every dish you put in here, and then on top of that, you can't even grill a piece of bruschetta there. See that bit there? You wouldn't eat that, would you? Huh? No. Talk to me. No. You're getting upset now? Yeah, I'm getting real upset. Thank for that. Hopefully, I'll get through to you now. You're throwing thousands of dollars down the drain. Why did you decide to go into business if you haven't got a clue how to run a business? All right, you know what? Why don't we make it a public issue with this now? This customer's here, this customer's here. I'd rather have this conversation okay. downstairs. How about that? Are you scared again? Am I scared? Yeah. You're embarrassing me in front of my customers. is a family and when the restaurant's in trouble it's a family that suffers so uh, I want to get to Joe's wife Melissa and just actually find out what's really going on in Joe's mind. Hi, hey, how Melissa, you? how are you, darling? Nice how you to meet well? you. Likewise, good to see you too. Thank you. How are you well? Boys home from school? Hi, they are. Yeah, and how are you doing, my man? First name? Evan. Evan, nice to see you. Girlfriend's name? Oh. Uh, this is a nice house. Oh, thank you. How long have you been here? Uh, four years. Four years, lovely. Yeah. So, um, three boys. Three boys. Big responsibility. Yep. Yeah. A lot of pressure on Joe's shoulders. Um, how do you think he's doing? He's very positive, mm -hmm. and you know it's his dream, and I know he's giving it his all to you know try and succeed. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not just all about being passionate in the kitchen. That's what I'm trying to tell him. And I whilst I love his enthusiasm around the food, it's a business. It's not just the food. I agree with you, 100%. I do, and I don't know. I mean, <laughs> so I'm glad you're here. I mean. I think he needs to see the black and white more. Mm -hmm. Hardest thing for me is that people like us put everything on the line for a dream. And I just want to see him have the time, you know, to succeed. Please don't get upset. I don't want you to get upset. Please. I told him all these 
these things that you've told him before. He needs to know the jeopardy. Like, as of this month alone, like, I can't be in my bills here. Like, Joey's months behind on us being paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as bad as it probably gets, you know? If this restaurant fails, we would lose everything. I mean, I'll lose my house. But this business can be turned around, and I've pointed out two or three things. Yes, it can. Yes, it definitely can. So you're going to help them? Yes. Now. Thank you. Having given Melissa his word, Gordon now knows that to turn this business around, he must spend time in the kitchen retraining the chefs, from food prep yep. to presentation. I've watched the way we serve food here. No one really gives any <laughs> care and attention to a little bit of presentation. I know it's rustic, but at least make sure that we've got a little bit of pride in what we're doing. That looks like <laughs> You can do better. Having Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen, that was pretty cool. He's on top of his game, man. That's why he's where he is. Just keep it flat. Yeah, it's just it's breaking apart. I don't know. It has so much water in it. Yeah, but you always salt it. Like you do like a granddad or like a Maru. You salt it so it gets nice and firm. What is that? He's one sharp cookie, I can tell you that much. Basically, he's teaching us that we have to step up. OK, chicken. Cut off the drum and the, the thigh and then sit them on top of one another. So it just looks a little bit neater, yeah? Now that Gordon has given Joe and the chef several pointers, it's time for Gordon to introduce a signature dish they can handle. Meatballs. Why can't this restaurant become famous for a meatball? I go to my restaurant in Sicily for meatballs. That's all I want. Just give me meatballs. Gordon showed us meatballs. I think it's a great idea. Let's go. A little bit of cheese on that. Good. I think us being known for the meatballs isn't so bad because um, we're usually known for uh, food never really coming out, ever. With the aid of Gordon's recipe, Joe and his staff are now armed with outstanding meatballs. Now it's time to conquer New Jersey. Meatballs. Oh, look at this. New Jersey's best meatballs. Are New Jersey's? Yes, best meatballs. Okay. Joe, give out the t-shirts. Stick the t- out came the meatballs and the, and, and the flashy t-shirts and the hats, and we pretty much shouted the message loud and clear, Campania's got the best meatballs in New Jersey. Give these meatballs away and get the reputation out there on the street, yes? Get them all around, folks. We got the best meatballs around. Stop on in and have some dinner one of these days. If we can start getting people into our restaurant for our meatballs, it's just a great step in the right direction. Let me put some hot sauce on there. <laughs> this is so much fun. That's wonderful. We got some meatball fans. You're a darling. There we are. Everyone loved the meatballs. Does that dog like meatballs? I think he does. Look at him. He, he loves it. Campania your restaurant. Campania your restaurant. We gave out some food. We spread the word about the restaurant. We had some fun. You know you want them. Yeah. Just don't get hit by a car for them. The best meatballs in New Jersey. Now that the meatball marketing has spread the word about Campania, it's time for Gordon to have a serious one-on-one -on -one talk with Joe. You bought it 18 months ago. Over a period of 18 months, how much have you lost? Yeah, I'd say about 120,000. I'm in trouble. How serious is this restaurant for you? <laughs> it's, it's everything to me. You think you could continue like this for what, six more months? About that. Yeah, I think that's pushing it. Your business is about Swim down the Hudson. I heard Gordon's point loud and clear. I mean, this is it. This is this is this is crunch time. Stand strong. Don't take it personally. Just take it seriously. Tomorrow is the biggest day. Coming up, it's Campania's reopening, and everyone is feeling the pressure. We need your specials now. She said the steak was too tough. Gordon has some quiet time with an unruly customer. Talking out your rear. And while some people welcome the changes to the menu, absolutely unbelievable. Others aren't so sure. I felt like I was eating ragu. It's a night filled with emotions. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? And a dinner service you don't want to miss. Next on Kitchen Nightmares. It's day four, and time for Campania's relaunch. Gordon's design team has come up with a contemporary new look to match the new direction of the restaurant. I've created a new look for the new Campania. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lovely. Oh, my God. Oh, how cool is that? Is that Holy nice? Crap. Awesome. Oh, how cute is that? Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's unbelievable. Wow. I was just absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away. And it was just high time for it to be changed. Now you can oh, really. 
Lovely. See, it's a restaurant. Ah. Oh, wow. All the lights are on. Wow. All the canopies lit. It just looks really inviting now. It's awesome. We definitely needed this. It looks like a proper restaurant. Yeah, now. Thank definitely. you. Definitely. So much. Well, is it happening? Yes. Warren has created so many great new things here. Like the sign and everything shows that he's making it better. Huh? Let's get inside, yes? Let's do it. Well, the one thing you're not going to smell when we get in here is garlic. Ah. Let's go. <laughs> I opened those doors and it was just alive. The restaurant was alive. The whole place just metamorphosized with some great, simple little changes. The dining room looks unbelievable. Those candles are going to be awesome at night. Yes. Is it nice? Oh, wow. It's the kind of place I just want to hang out. I am a little overwhelmed right now. I have really no words to say. You know, it's a little shocked. The lights are dim. The music is on, <laughs> right? Let's clutter there. This place is lovely. You guys have transformed yeah. my restaurant. Follow me through to the kitchen. Let's go. Oh, no. Joe's stressed out a lot, so when you see him smile like that, it makes you feel good. Come through. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so freaking cool. Launch the new menu. A new stove. Yes? I'm overwhelmed with this big, beautiful stove. You know, boys with toys, this is my new toy right here, baby. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Gene almost had tears in his eyes. Big, mean Gene. I don't have to light the pilots every time I turn it on. It's just phenomenal. Happy? Good. Good, good, good. I'm just so happy to see him getting a little help. He deserves to succeed. And I just, I know he's gonna. Gordon also provided smaller plates to coincide with the smaller portions. Oh my god. Any plates? They're smaller. Check it out. Plates were just way too big, and therefore we had to use a lot more food to fill them up, and that's also uh, losing money right there. Well, man, I, I am speechless. You guys have done so much for us in one day. I don't yeah. know what to well. say. Next step in getting ready for the big night, Gordon sits down with the young chefs to introduce a brand new menu. Okay, the secret um, of the menu is to keep it tight. We have to start making money. I had some initial concern about what my customers would think about coming in and not seeing my big, diverse menu. This menu includes the new pasta and risotto section. The fettuccine, um, something you expect to see in any you know, nice restaurant, but do it with a little bit more varied, you know, pesto, tomato, alfredo. I like the new menu a lot. Gordon's, uh, that's, he's one sharp with you, I can tell you that much. Um, the braised pork, that was a great dish. The creamy polenta coats the pork. The flavor was lovely. And then the bistecca, you know, a really nice grilled New York strip steak with roasted potatoes and spinach, beautifully done. The meatballs, we've done it in both appetizer and entree as well. We've now focused on our meatball as becoming a bit of a hallmark. If people start bitching, the meatballs are going to come out of the kitchen, and hopefully that'll appease them while they're waiting. Try the meatball. Oh, I'm go get it. I'll tell you. Try the meatball. I really like the new menu and the way we're doing it, and the concept of having a smaller menu. Everything was good. Try the steak is awesome. An hour before the opening, Gordon comes up with a clever way to motivate the young waitstaff. I've devised a plan, the same plan I have with my waiters and waitresses, that every item on this menu will be sold. Every item. Here we go. Come with me. Let's go. Up here is the menu, OK? And on these boards are your names. Each and every one of you, yeah, have got to sell every item on this list. The first person finishes a complete menu, you shout bingo. And there, you've got a $100 incentive. The whole idea of having a, a contest to motivate servers, I think it's a great idea. A hundred dollars to sell the whole menu. I have a six o'clock booking for table five. Perfect. Okay. Ready? I'm so ready. We gotta talk together tonight. We gotta work as a team. I'm gonna step up as much as I can and hopefully it works out. You're expediting. You're delegating everybody out the kitchen, right? I'm excited for tonight's dinner service. I think everyone's gonna be on a good positive note tonight. Now look at that oven. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's do or die for us. Failure is not an option. I'm not going to let Gordon down. I have to show him that we can do this. It's got to happen. Tonight is the reopening of Campania. Darling, could you open the doors, please? And Gordon Ramsay's new menu has packed the restaurant. Welcome to Campania. Welcome to Campania. This is the night Joe has been waiting for. But if it doesn't go well, it could destroy his dream. This is a big night for us. The pressure's on. Gene, first I was here, yes? Do it, guys. Good night. I want Gordon to leave on a high note. I want to be able to pull this off. 
Josef, write it down, spread the word, okay? We're gonna do a red snapper in Cartoccio. I'll be right back in just a moment. Take your orders. So you can look over the menu. Thank you. Are you guys ready to order your entrees? What do you have? Steak. I'm gonna try the meatballs and spaghetti on your recommendation. Sure. Oh, the ravioli. Ravioli. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Listen. Everything sells together tonight. If somebody says their food's ready in two minutes, it's two minutes. The first orders are in, and Gordon's waiter competition is underway. You're off meatballs gone. What else? Chicken, chicken, chicken. I just got a ten top. I'm about to sell like half of it. Okay, go, 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 go. The first customers of the night are responding well to the new menu. You have to taste this. This is, a, this is absolutely unbelievable. Best food I ever had. But even good food can't impress everybody. Absolutely terrible. Even I can talk better than that. That's horrible. That was horrible. That's absolutely horrible. Terrible. Are you kidding? Or? No, I'm not. Oh, you're serious? That I wouldn't even feature my dog. Terrible. Everyone at the table doesn't like any of the food. What should I do? Do I pop everything? Or? Here I am now in this pinnacle moment, and I start hearing the complaints. It was almost too bad to be true. I need you need to get feedback from me, okay? Why did you like it? She said the steak was too tough, which doesn't look tough to me. After Gordon sees nothing is wrong with the food, he decides it's time to stick up for his young chefs. Let me try to say to you. Why don't you just take a seat and just sit down and try to enjoy a cup of coffee? How can you enjoy something that when you come... My husband is starving. You know, right. Like, okay. Okay. My steak was tough. Okay, good. But, madam, unfortunately, you're talking out your rear. And... and uh, your mouth, sir. Oh, really? But well, you're just walking around looking for trouble. Why don't you just sit down and stop trying to cause trouble? There we go. Ladies, welcome. Good evening. So sorry about the old bag. An hour into dinner service, and menu bingo is achieving its goal of customers ordering a wide variety of items on the menu. I want to see who's winning. Joseph, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm the second place. You are second place. Winner. Now the pressure of the big night is taking its toll on Joe. It's too much saffron on that. It's too much. Oh, when anything goes wrong. The car looks like like absolute. Joe gets in that really stressed out, panicky mode. Why is that taking a long time, Joe? I worry about Joe. I worry about stress level. Uh, why is that taking a long time? Uh, because those chickens just got cooked. Are you serious? I need salt. I'm very reactionary. I get stressed out for like five minutes, but you know what? I just try to find that comfort zone. I could tune things out if I want to. Gene, I'm leaving you guys be now. What? I gotta run out there, okay? Looking for a little relief from the intensity of the kitchen, Joe takes a stroll into the dining room. Hey, how's it going? I'll see you in a bit, man, okay? We got we got a life to talk. How's it going, guys? You guys have a horrible habit of dropping every table in the restaurant at the same time. There is Joe. Good talking to you guys. He's like Houdini. He's not around, and you have to pick up the slack. Gene, yeah, it's getting crazy out there now. We've got to step up again, yes? All right, guys, come on. With Gene left alone in the kitchen, One left. orders are backed up, and customers are now experiencing what Campania used to be known for, slow service. We've been here for 40 minutes, and I haven't eaten yet. We just had to do a lot of things differently tonight. We've been here since 7 o'clock. Everything just took a while to come out. I mean, it's, it's insane back there, but uh, now it's coming right out. I'm so busy right now. I can't even breathe right now. Everyone's waiting for two hours for their food. Nine is it really nine o'clock? It's two hours. How long does it take to make spaghetti? <laughs> I'm having lettuce. They don't understand what's taking so long. I mean, but at least if somebody would have came over a little bit, I know I was I have a table of, like, eight people. They're upset. They want to speak to a manager. Dropping <laughs> <laughs> table 20. Hold on, hold on. Everybody shut up. Dude, this is a fluster. Guys, what's going on? I don't know what to say. I don't. I was out at the table. They had a complaint. They waited a long time. Uh, they weren't happy with the food. I'm sorry about what happened. I'm sorry. That's not exactly what's happening. All right, let me. I, I got. I got to run. I got to run back there. I'm sorry. But no, I do. I do. I guess you really do. At that point, you know, I really didn't want to be in that position, and I was really just trying to back away from the table. 
The pasta's going in. While Jean puts out fires in the kitchen, the angry customer is making her way to the front of the restaurant and is now complaining in front of Joe's mom. She's out there complaining to these people. Is Joe out there? I don't know. I'm very disappointed. I've been here many, many times. I felt like I was eating ragu. I really did. Yeah, that one out there was saying the food's like ragu. She's out there moaning. I had the fish. It was great. Well, somebody else had the fish, and it tasted like pond water. I'm listening to this witch. I want to go strangle her. I was so aggravated. I was so upset, you know, that somebody would do that to my son. While Joe could not defuse the situation with the unhappy customer, shockingly, a less than sober but satisfied customer comes to the defense of Campagna. Okay. She said, don't take Why did you keep eating? Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? What's her problem? If it was that bad? Because you're the f liar. You just want everything for free, you greedy Oh my God! In heaven, you people are mental. Go have another bottle of wine, alcoholic. Have another bottle of wine, alcoholic. Who is that person? Why did you keep beating if it was that bad? What's her problem? If it was that bad, because you're the liar. You just want everything for free, you greedy. Oh my God! In heaven, you people are mental. Go have another bottle of wine. Alcoholic. Oh, Italian, honey. Yeah. Italian. Can I just, Can I just be alone? Have another bottle of white. Oh, white. A police car on neighborhood patrol extinguishes the fiery argument outside the restaurant. Okay, sorry, just uh, two seconds, please. Let's go. Back in the kitchen. Gordon asks to talk to Joe privately to get him focused and back on track. When you're pissed, straight to the point, over and done with, and move on. Yeah. You understand? Don't hide behind there. Mm. Step out into the dining room two or three times, in with the customers, 30 seconds, back out. Mm. If anyone's disgruntled, put an end to it immediately. Don't stand there bargaining with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just and, and back in. But yeah. always, I want to see you run it. Yeah. Yeah? I have to get serious. It takes me a long time to get something through my thick skull. But when it, when it does happen, I'm steadfast. I was going to do it. I believed in it. And when I believe in something, do it. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Let's sell these. Let's sell these. You got spinach? I want to make sure that we're nice and vibrant, yes? Right now, two steaks, two veals, and a chicken, OK? Every steak that comes in now, right skirt, so we can tell the difference, OK? okay. Listen. And now that Joe has taken his mission seriously, it rubs off on his staff who are now working professionally and efficiently. Skirt steak, spread the word, OK? Make it a good thing. It's something special. Jazz Ramekin. Now I think Joe has motivation to do what he can to make it better. And he just inspired us all to, I think, just work work as a team, communicate, um, be a little more serious. They're catching you up now. Come on, come on, come on. The honey and the strawberries, so good. Yep, there goes one more. OK, I'm going to start the mozzarella over here. You've only got two left. Yes, I do. Yeah. Look at that, though. Yes. Yeah. I told you I was going to get a bottle of wine or a hundred for you. I'm going to have the hundred. A hundred dollars I won tonight. Just for playing bingo. But, you know, I busted my butt and I sold everything I needed to sell. I knew I was going to win. I knew it. Server bingo is definitely fun. The whole idea of having a, a contest to motivate servers, I think it's a great idea. Ariana, I just won. Server bingo was a really novel idea, and it worked. We were all talking about afterwards. Hey, we want to keep doing that. We like the contest. That was fun. Can you guys handle these pickups now? There's not much more coming in. Really, nothing was going to stop me. Gordon really forced the issue on me, and I really believed at that point that these changes were good. Perfect. Joe, have somebody follow you with it. OK. Joe was uh, definitely more focused, especially behind the line. There was no practical jokes going on. Really, really enjoyed the food. It was great. <laughs> Because we care. I was making sure that everybody was on top of their game, and if they weren't, I'd, I'd be there to help them out. What? Wow. Proud of you. Proud of you too. Good night. Have a nice weekend. Now that the last tables have been served, Gordon gathers the team together. The difference in tonight's service, as opposed to last night's service, was night and day, and we've done double the amount of people tonight that we did last night. Two hundred and three. We're in for dinner. We were consistent. The food was good. The service was good. And everybody had an appetizer, an entree, and dessert. 
What would be the take come what? Midnight. So we took in about $7,500. We made three times what we made last night. I don't think I've ever made the money um, that, that I made tonight. Tonight was a really successful night. Really was. Oh. Hey, hey. There's no words. No words to tell you how I feel about what Gordon's done to Joey. I am thrilled to death for him. And let me tell you what I saw. You, tonight, showed me that, yes, you were a head chef. Don't stop. Don't stop. I think there's good things in our future. I mean, we're going to dig our heels in, and we got a good groundwork now after Gordon came in here. In the days that followed, customers were thrilled with the new menu. With sensible portions, less waste in the fridge, and more customers, profits increased dramatically. You know, I'm happy. I like the food that's going out the window. Happy customers, great food, good bottom line. Joe finally started behaving like a boss and not everyone's friend. You're going to sell two chickens for me, OK? Successfully taking control of both the front of the house. Pleasure to meet you guys. And the kitchen. OK, good. We're going to sell two steaks and a chicken. Somebody call that door. Food's going cold. And now, Campania is known for its quality, rather than its quantity. With the staff now ready to run a restaurant properly, there was one more thing Gordon wanted to take care of before he said goodbye. The food looked great on there. Yes? We're not going back to stupid, big steering wheels. That's what we're serving. Look at them. Aren't they horrible? Let's go. Yeah. Do one. Say goodbye to them. Say goodbye. I tell you, breaking those plates was just like, you know, the weight, you know, coming off my shoulders. When Gordon broke the plates, we were like, rock on, that's awesome. Goodbye to the big plate. Hello, profits. One, two, three, go. God, you're happy? <laughs> The breaking of the plates, how symbolic was that? Wasn't it awesome? Out with the old and, you know, into the new. Thank you. Well done. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. What up, big boy? Yes? Huh? You know, you hate to see him go, but it was a good time. We got to break all the plates. He, uh, he was proud of us, I think. Right, oh, Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that Campania is going to be everything that Joey wants it to be. Good night, guys. First day I met Gordon, I couldn't wait until that guy said goodbye. But once I got beyond my pride being hurt, my ego being hurt, and started listening to what he had to say, he was like a true mentor to me. Customers have to come back for the good food, not the portion size. Absolutely. Remember that, yes? Right. Good luck. Thanks. You meatball. Uh, <laughs> good luck. Take care. All right. Hey, don't stop. I won't. Joe and the Campania gang were a fun group to hang out with, but the lack of discipline was killing the business. It feels like they've changed. I only hope it continues. Next time, Gordon finds a family restaurant in crisis. You can become famous in the next 24 hours for poison half of Babylon. The owner is a wreck. I'm going to kill myself. And her brother is a tyrant. Give me this out. What are you about? The chef's worn down. When the dishes are ready, that's when they're going to come out. And the kitchen's worn out. Should I come back next week for the baked clams? Can Gordon unite his dysfunctional family restaurant? Next time on Kitchen Nightmares.